Greetings, it's Max Zero Diddly, and today I am going to be showing you how to ping an IP address or website using Visual Basic. So before we go get into it, make sure you import system.net.network information and Microsoft.VisualBasic.Devices because we'll be needing these to ping an address. And by ping address, what I'm saying is we're going to attempt to send an internet control message protocol echo message to a specified address. And then we're going to try and receive a corresponding internet control message protocol echo reply from that address. And then if we do get a reply, we can then take the time it took for that to happen as our latency. If we don't get a reply within our timeout time, then we can assume we can't reach the address within a specified time. That's what we're going to be doing. Let's get into it. So we've got console.write line ping address www.google.com. Ping address we're gonna, it's going to be a function we make in a moment. This is the URL we want to check, and a thousand is for timeout time. The timeout time is in milliseconds, so if you do a thousand, that's one second, because there are a thousand milliseconds in a second. And obviously, we can put this wherever we want. I'm doing one second. And obviously, if, our, if we don't receive a reply, and it's been one second, then we assume we can't reach the address. We might be able to reach reach that address, but not in our timeout time. And we do console.read line to stop the program from closing. So let's make our function. So we do function ping address, address as string, timeout as integer, and this function is going to return our long value. You don't have to, but it's a 64-bit integer. It's just in case you're dealing with really big numbers that aren't supported by a 32-bit integer. And obviously, address as string, that's the IP. Timeout as integer is the maximum time we're going to try and ping that address for. Inside, we're going to define a few things. So we're going to do dim result as ping reply. This is going to be what stores the results of our ping. And then dim send ping is going to be what's actually going to send that ping to the address we want to ping. And then dim latency as long, this is going to store the latency of that ping if there is a latency. After that, we are going to do a try catch statement. So we do try catch ex as exception console.writeline ex and try. We need to do a try catch statement as we are doing networking. If something goes wrong, we don't want the program to crash. And we can print out the exception so we know why so the error occurred. So we can debug it or give us more useful information like maybe the address doesn't exist. And we do return minus one because basically, since we're returning a latency, you can't have a negative latency. Like there's, unless I guess you're time traveling, but I'm going to assume you're not time traveling. So we can basically return a negative number as our way of saying, right, this we couldn't ping the address. Now it could be minus one, minus two, minus 420, minus 69, minus 420, 69, if you want to be really funny. I'm going to stick with minus one though, but it can be anything, as long as it's a negative number though, so it doesn't interfere with any actual ping result. So we are going to put a few lines of code in our try statement. So we're going to do result equals send ping dot send address and timeout. So basically we are get we're going to be assigning a value to our result ping reply. And it's going to be equal to whatever send ping dot send returns. And obviously we pass in the address and the timeout because we need those two things when we send our ping. The address where we want to send the ping to and the timeout being how long do we want to spend trying to get a, res a response. And then we can do latency equals results dot round trip time. So we're just setting our latency long variable to be the round trip time to get how long it took to get our response. Then what we can do is we can do if results.status equals IP status dot success, then return latency. Basically, this occurs if we were successfully able to get a response. If we get a response, we want to then return how long that took. We don't need to do an else if because after this, we'll then go on to this return minus one, and this will be executed either if an error occurs or we don't get a response in the given time. And that's basically it for this tutorial. So I'm going to save the work and then we're going to um, 
Hit play. And it says nine. Because it took nine milliseconds. We're going to hit it again. And it says nine again, which is pretty good. We're going to do YouTube this time. And it's nine. Now we're going to do a URL that doesn't exist. And we get an error saying it can't find it. And then we get the minus one at the end. Let's go back to this and do 100 instead. And it's a 10 this time. We were slightly slower. And that's it for this tutorial. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. And subscribe if you want to see more Visual Basics tutorials. Thanks for being a great audience.